You're watching News24 Live. Welcome to this week's Super Rugby preview and prediction show with our rugby panel from Sport24 editor Gary Namney and our chief rugby writer Rob Howing. Gents, good morning. Hello. Round nine, South African sides not looking too convincing. Rob, we'll get onto that later. Let's start off with Friday's first couple of games. Blues versus Brumbies and then the Crusaders versus the Highlanders. Yeah, um, Blues Brumby. So I actually scratched my head a little bit over that one. Um, I've done the sensible thing by, by going for the slightly more form team, the Brumbies, to get an away win. But I think it could be close. The, the Blues are one of those teams that have been right down in the doldrums. Lots of uh, pressure, lots of publicity around John Kerwin, etc. Is it crisis time at Eden Park, etc. But um, they're getting closer and closer. And I think, again, they might get quite close, but not quite be good enough. Mm. The Brumbies team on paper, um, I still think, has, has a little bit more quality to it, um, more of a winning habit going. And I've got them sneaking that one by perhaps two points for, for a valuable win for the Brumbies. And, of course, uh, bias for the Hurricanes and the Chiefs, so a good opportunity for the Brumbies to sort of get themselves up there. Eh? Yeah, get absolutely. Five or six points off the pace. Yeah, they're an ambitious side. They, they, they always are. Um, and and I, I do think that they'll, uh, they'll, they'll do the business. Garen, mm. Crusaders, Highlanders. Uh, Crusaders, I see, have made a few changes to their pack. Dan Carter is back from paternity leave. He's on the bench with Richie McCall. So, yeah, obviously a lot of depth in that team, as we know. Yeah, it should be a fantastic game. Um, you know, it's difficult to read into the, the Crusaders' performance against the Sharks last weekend because the Sharks were, were so hopeless. So the Crusaders looked really, really good. Mm. Um, I'm not 100% convinced, um, you know, the, the flight back, even though they are playing in Christchurch, this, this Highlanders team is, is a really strong one. They've played some really, really good rugby this year. They've got some massive players in their back line, which I think will trouble the, the, the Crusaders. Good to see Carter back from his paternity leave, as you say. McCaw, you know, I think he, um, his future might lie on the bench as a substitute. He's sort of you know, getting on a little bit now. I think the All Black selectors will want to cotton wool him a little bit for the mm. Rugby World Cup. Should, should Do you think, sorry, yeah. uh, Gerard is looking ahead to the World Cup the All Blacks will be captained by him or someone like Kieran Reid? I, th I think Richie McCall will be the captain. I'm just not sure how much game time he'll actually get. You know, he could be one of these captains that sort of pulled after 50, 60 minutes at most with Kieran Reid obviously taking over. I think Kieran Reid is probably the future of, of All Black rugby as a skipper. Richie McCall, I think, is just hanging on, hanging on mm. for the one more World Cup. Um, you know, he's obviously been a fantastic servant of New Zealand rugby. He thoroughly deserves his place in their in their in their <coughs> squad, but he is sort of giving away a number of penalties more so than he has in the mm. past. I think refs have, you know, finally caught on to him. They're, they're, they're looking out for him. A lot has been read about him, uh, written sorry about him, and how he approaches the breakdown in particular. Mm. So I think he's a marked man, which may be a little bit unfair at times because he, uh, you know, he is blown up a lot, and some of them are very very grey areas. You know, the, the rules don't obviously help. Um, every ref seems to interpret them differently. So, you know, he's, um, he, he'll definitely be there, you know, obviously injury p p permitting. So, you know, look out for him to lead the All Blacks at the World Cup. But in this game, tough, tough game. It's going to be very, very close. Um, I'm just worried that the jet lag for the Crusaders getting all the way back to Christchurch might um, hamper them in the, in the early stages of the match if the Highlanders get off to a flying start. Like they have many matches this season, they could be tough to haul in. But having said all that, um, I think I'm going to go for a home win for the Crusaders by two points. Rob, the late Saturday morning game is a big one. Waratahs, Stormers. I see the Waratahs, obviously they had a bye, uh, unchanged side this week. The Stormers get back uh, Juan de Jong as, at, uh, as captain, um, Nizamkar. So, yeah, also another side with a lot of depth. Came close last weekend. Yeah, I think... Uh Again, uh, Stormers, another team who have, have looked good in patches. They, they were almost sensational in the second mm. half. Um, but you've got to say, it was a little bit after the horse had bolted. 25-3 um, mm. down at half time. It, it was pretty much, you know, sort of good night nurse for them. And uh, they, the way they came back was, was obviously incredibly spirited, but, but not enough. Um, mm. Okay, they got a losing bonus point. But, you know, we know that you sometimes need a little bit more than that. Uh, you need to get that vital one win on the road. I don't feel it's going to come this weekend. Um, I think they've got a better mm. chance when they finish their, their roster overseas against the force, I think it is, uh, in their 
last round game. Uh, that's one that perhaps they can target a little bit more. I'm pleased, though, that they've sort of freshened up the team a little bit. I'm quite pleased to see Franz Malherbeck getting a start. Vincent Koch has been absolutely sensational on the tight head side. But, you know, sometimes, especially with your tight forwards and front rankers, you do need to do some rotation at times to keep them fresh. And I think we'll see a fair bit of Koch in the second half if, mm. if the, the Bulls, uh, or sorry, if the Stormers are getting a little bit of a head of steam. Um, and he'd be a very useful guy to, to bring off the bench. But it's also not a bad thing that another Springbok in Franz Malherbe uh, finally gets a start because I think he'll be quite motivated to, to do quite well. I think the Stormers will again have a, a pretty decent set piece. But as I wrote earlier this week, the one yeah. hassle when you play the Waratahs is that the Waratahs also pride themselves a bit on their set piece. They've got a pretty heavy pack, um, you know, not just the tight five, but among the loose forwards as well. Um, you know, with, with guys like um, uh, Palu and, uh, and of course, Jacques Potheta, no stranger to, to South Africans. Mm. Um, they're a team on, on a bit of a roll, and I think it's very difficult to see the Stormers actually winning this one. The best hope, maybe, is that they can, they can snaffle a losing bonus point. I'm not even necessarily sure on that score that it's, it's going to happen. I think that it might just blow out a little bit. Um, and I, I've got the Waratahs perhaps uh, nicking that one by sort of 8, 9, 10 points. Um, uh, so, uh, again, uh, unfortunately, no joy. Um, but uh, don't, don't write them off completely. Mm. Um, the Stormers have won in Sydney before, although you have to go back to 2007, I think it is, uh, for their last win there. Um, but uh, I think uh, common sense tells you that you've reluctantly got to go the, the way of the champions. Garen, do you agree? The Stormers had a blistering start to the season, and now they're kind of losing their way. Yeah, no, definitely. I agree with Rob. There's no way the Stormers are going to win this game. I, th I think the biggest problem for them is going to be the fact that in the past they've had ascendancy at scrum time, set piece time, and have just been outplayed in the back line. This time around, the, the Waratahs pack is going to be bigger than them, heavier than them, stronger than them. Between Will, Will Skelton, Wyckoff Paolo, Jacques Portkett, who's got zero regard for his body, throws himself around mm -hmm. madly. Um, they're going to outweigh the Stormers pack. And then out wide, I think every top team is going to have a backline better, more skilled, faster, bigger than the Stormers. It just, you know, the Stormers have got a very, very small backline. Mm -hmm. Apart from Del Endy, everyone is very, very light and short. Um, and, and, and you look at the Waratahs backline, Israel Folau, perhaps the best fullback in the world. They've got Adam Ashley Cooper back um, mm -hmm. on the bench. So they've got some star star players that I think are just going to relish running at the at the Stormers and the, and the Waratahs you know at the moment they sort of they've only played six games they've had two buys it's, it's quite a strange draw that they've had but I, I, I see them there semi-finalists finalists even you know as defending champions they've got a lot to prove I, I, don't, I see them at the business end of this tournament Stormers sadly not um, so I think the Waratahs are going to win fairly comfortably I wouldn't be surprised if they don't pick up a, a, a four try bonus point the Stormers defence will still be pretty good mm. but the Stormers I think will be happy and settle for a losing bonus point but as Rob says they might well not even get that